Sunday 16. Simple or silly? G'day. Well, today we're going to go through the Sunny 16 rule. It's a very old system back in the film days. A lot of cameras didn't have light meters or you didn't want to get out your external light meter and measure things. So you just calculated in your head using this thing called the Sunny 16 rule. Now the whole concept used the exposure triangle that I talked about in my last video. There's a link below for that. And it based itself on using aperture priority of f16 on a nice sunny day it's only worked in full sun you have to change things otherwise so the sunny 16 rule went first aperture f16 then you looked at your iso back in the days was film fixed iso you shot the whole film with the same iso and you adjusted according to the light by your shutter speed so at f16 at say ISO or ASA back then 200 you set your shutter speed at the ISO so sunny day f16 your film stock was ISO 200 so you set your shutter speed at 200 to the per second that was it if you happen to be using 400 ISO film then you set your shutter speed at 400 to the per second if you're using a low ISO film say 40 then you set your shutter speed down to 40 or the nearest equivalent and that way you had decent exposure on a sunny day for all the photos you took and you didn't need your light meter you just use that simple thing in your head f16 whatever your iso is that's what your shutter speed was now that's all well and good but it had some complications <laughs> because maybe you didn't want a shutter speed that matched your iso if you're shooting 400 iso film you didn't always want 400th of a second you might have wanted a bit of motion blur or something like that you wanted a shutter speed that was a lot slower say 50th of a second something like that and because you're using film you couldn't change the ISO setting halfway through the film at <laughs> all that did be developed at the same ISO so the only way to compensate was to change your shutter speed so you had to then figure out how many stops you needed to adjust your shutter speed according to how many stops you adjusted your aperture and of course back in those days if you were shooting 400 ASO film a lot of cameras didn't have 400th of a second shutter speed they had 500th which was the nearest thing you could go to but if you wanted to step down to a slower shutter speed you went say from 500th 250th 125th, 60th, 30th of a second. <laughs> okay, that's one, two, three, four stops that you've adjusted your shutter speed. So you have to adjust your aperture the same amount. And this is where it starts to break down in the old film days because if you decrease your shutter speed, you're letting more light in, so you have to close the aperture down more. And you're already on f16. Most lenses back in the day didn't close down any more than that. So this is where these rules are more like guides because often they just fall apart because you couldn't go from f16 on a lot of those old lenses to 22, 32, something like that. They didn't have them. So then you had to adjust with neutral density filters, which is a whole other story again. Now at f16, everything's really sharp <laughs> from like six or two meters away to infinity so if you're say shooting a portrait of a person and you want the background blurred out at f16 that's not going to happen so you would want to adjust your aperture make it wider so you go down 16 11 8 5.6 4 2.8 that's six stops so you have to adjust your shutter speed then six stops 
Now remember, you started on f16 hundredth of a second. You've adjusted your aperture six stops. You have to adjust your film speed six stops. So the nearest equivalent to 100 was 125th. So that's where you would have been starting on. Six stops, 250th, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, 8,000. Not many old film cameras could do that. So again, these rules are general guidelines to help you, but they often just fall apart. <laughs> But on a modern digital camera, you can do that. My XC2 here goes to 8 thousandths of a second. That's great. I can do that with this modern digital camera. A lot of the old film cameras you just couldn't do that. They didn't go that fast. And back then, apart from the uh, sunny 16 rule, which works on a nice sunny day, <laughs> if it's not a nice sunny day, you can't use that. So they tried to invent other rules <laughs> called uh, slight overcast 11. Overcast 8, heavy overcast 5.6, <laughs> sunset 4, snowy F22, <laughs> sounds like a weather forecast. Some of them don't exactly uh, roll off the tongue, <laughs> but they were there as a general guide and uh, you could use them as a general guide, but they were all pretty limited sticking to uh, one f-stop to cover everything. However, it is a nice sunny day out there. Look at that, beautiful sunshine. So we're gonna start taking some photos using this rule and I'll show you how it works on a nice sunny day, how it works when you're in shade, things like that. Let's go. So I'm gonna use my uh, X-T2 here. I've got a 18 to 135 lens on it. You can adjust the aperture. So let's actually try this. It's a beautiful sunny day here. I'm gonna photograph a nice sunny scene. I'm on ISO 200 and I'm on f16 so my shutter speed will be 200 very good now what happens if there's some shade there just happens to be quite a bit of shade here behind me so lots of shade from the trees on the ground and all of a sudden it's way too dark so I'm gonna have to adjust now according to those old rules, I would say this is about overcast 8. So cloudy weather but not dark. So I have to adjust my aperture f-stop down to 8. So let's go down to f8. Still at ISO 200, still at shutter speed of a 200 of a second. And... Yeah, it works quite well exposed, suitably exposed. So these general guidelines do seem to work. Now I'm going to take a photo in a darker situation. Even though it's still a beautiful bright sunny day, I haven't actually moved, but the camera I'm recording on is in deep shadow and it's black. <laughs> so let's see what would happen there. So what have we got in these old rules? Heavy overcast, 5.6. Bad weather, maybe rainy. <laughs> well, heavily overcast situation right here with a dark subject so let's go down to 5.6 5.6 ISO 200 still shutter speed 200 still and focus shoot hey to bring out the dark object suitably even uh, with the light background went down to f 5.6 and it seemed to work so that's the basics of the uh, Sunny 16 rule. It works, but it severely limits the way you do things because you're stuck on uh, a very, very large depth of field. If you want shallower depth of field, you're gonna have to radically change your aperture and therefore your shutter speed when you're using film. With digital cameras, it's great because uh, you can shoot every photo at a different ISO and that gives you far more latitude to uh, cover all the different situations that you might find without running out of f-stops, without running out of shutter speed settings. <laughs> so digital cameras are um, much easier to use than the old film cameras. Now that old rule of the, that I was talking about before about taking a portrait shot, you don't always want f-16, you don't want the background really sharp, you might want to blur it out, you have to adjust your aperture to something wider so you get shallower depth of field so the person in the portrait is sharp 
background is blurred. On the whole film cameras, if you can adjust your shutter speed <laughs> to match your new aperture setting, if you have enough stops, then that's well and good. And then you can blur out the background as we'll see. Hope that makes things a little bit clearer about using the old Sunny 16 rule. It had its place, had lots of limitations. Digital cameras are far easier. Put it on auto ISO even. That'll solve most of your problems. You can then adjust your uh, aperture and shutter speed to uh, suit whatever you need to do as far as depth of field or subject bl motion blur or anything like that. So thanks for watching. All my YouTubes are independent. I don't have ads, I don't have sponsors, I don't have affiliate links, I'm not trying to sell anything. You can show me a bit of love, buy me a coffee www.buymeacoffee.com slash Greg Carrick <laughs> Whatever you do, whatever camera you got, pick it up, take it for a walk and have some fun. Bye.